when I decided to come here in Cambodia, I believed that God is with me and I felt I have joy in serving Him. Back in our home village, I was walking and talking with God, complaining about my family, and then God comforted me and told me that what if you will go out from your family and explore the world that I have created? The world is so big. And in the following months, my pastor handed me the brochure of the boot camp. And so when I read the, the policies, the brochures, and then I got excited and interested to join the camp. So I signed up as a member. But then my pastor told me that they need a female leader. So I ended up with joining my first time boot camp as a head female leader. And so during that one month camp, I felt like unsatisfied of serving God because my desire was to go and share the gospel. But then being a female head leader, just need to stay most of the time at the kitchen, go to the market, buying food, and then prepare the food for the team. So after the camp, I inquired about the BMW, because I heard that that um, base, we have this Bible school, and it's a free Bible school. And so I inquired the coordinator, what are the requirements, and then praise God, yeah. I joined there. It was um, 2006 that I joined BMW. When I heard about Teen Missions International, by that time, I realized that, hey, God called me in this Bible school. And then I knew then that God has a plan for me to go out not to remain in my home village. So after two years of academic, I was commissioned and then I was doing my internship in the other island. And then one day, my coordinator, she phoned me. She said that uh, somebody from Florida was there and asking help for Cambodia. I was in the Philippines at our uh, Teen Missions base there and uh, I was with Fernando and Jenna Lee Tan. And uh, there was a message that came from uh, the director in Florida saying that we had a real need for staff at the uh, new base in Cambodia. Um, were there any students that uh, might be available uh, to fill that need? And I asked Fernando and he said, well, I've got a couple people in mind. And uh, one of those uh, was Nellie. The moment I remember, Nellie was out in the fields uh, I think she was planting some crops or pulling weeds, had a big straw hat on, and just a smile on her face while she was sweating, working out there in the sun, just happy to serve the Lord. So uh, I asked Nellie, would you be willing to pray about uh, making a big commitment and leaving your homeland, getting a passport and serving in Cambodia? And she was, she was willing. And another intern, Sarah, uh, the two of them, uh, left everything behind and uh, came to follow the Lord in Cambodia. We arrived here in Cambodia last February 1st, 2009. Upon arriving at the airport, I saw the place. Wow! I said, it looks like in Africa, the roads are color orange. And so because you are two, uh, I'm not really feel a friend. And it, during my first three months, it was summertime here in Cambodia. So hot, the weather. And we didn't, we didn't have BMW student that time. We're working most of the time at the construction work at the base. We're uh, doing ministry like English ministry. We're teaching the neighborhood free English so we can share to them also the good news. And then we had this every year boot camp. In 2009, I met Teacher Akim Kopilang and Nelly and Sarah. 
Then that time I need help. So I asked them, that, can you help me to do ministry in the village? Because that time I teach English and share the gospel in two villages. And they said, yeah, we can work with you. Because here in Cambodia have many Filipinos also at the church and they encourage us to keep on going to explore this country. During my first year here, I've noticed that their food is really different from my country. Uh, so many strange food at the market, like snakes, frogs, snails, and etc. Uh, one time, I was uh, deceived. I thought it was a kind of bird, but then it was rat. So I bought it from the market and then I cook it. And then later on, uh, we, we noticed that it was not a bird. It was a rat. And then I said to myself, oh no, never again buy that kind of food. So um, because of the Khmer roads, people were struggling how to find food. And so because of that, until now, nowadays, you can see them eating strange food. So my uh, first time boot camp, yeah, it was good. So many campers. And because the language, I didn't know that time yet. And I had this in my heart, the desire of knowing their language so that I can communicate to them. And one day I complained to God. I sit in front of the gate and I prayed to him, Lord, why you uh, brought me here? I don't know their language. I don't know what's the reason why the kids are crying. And people passing by, I don't know. I don't understand their language. And God is faithful. Later on, he sent somebody to teach me their language. And because of his grace, yeah, now I'm able to speak to them in their own language. Unfortunately, after um, three years, my leader from Indonesia, he left the country last 2013. And then um, somebody from Teen Missions, Malawi, they came here and they act as my leaders. But then after two years, they told us that they're leaving the country and then they're searching who will who will be the next leader. They choose me to be in charge of the ministry. My heart was like, it was hard for me because I'm not yet ready to accept that responsibility, but I have no choice than to accept the reality. And praise God for the strength that He gave me. Yeah, I was able to manage and to continue the ministry since 2015 until now. We had different kinds of ministries like MSSM Ministries, BMW, and Boot Camp. I taught the students every term classes and by 2016 um, we split out the schools we're running Shimbrip and Kampung Chinang at the same time so it was really hard for me traveling back and forth checking everything is doing well uh, with the local staff I have only two local staff one in Shimbrip one in Kampung Chinang Plus, um, doing the reports, finance reports, reports to the government. I was hoping that God will raise up somebody from this country to be the leader. But then, yeah, unfortunately, after how many months, one staff went home, and after a few months, another staff decided to go my hardest part here in Cambodia. Uh, how to keep on going the ministry without having a local staff. And my struggle was finding the volunteer teachers. But then praise God for His mercy. Yeah, He called um, 
local people and missionaries to help me teaching with the students. I never thought that I can make it. It was hard, but then it is for the Lord. There are culture here. Yeah, this is a Buddhist country. It's so sad. You can see many people worshiping idols, uh, offering food to the temples for their ancestors. There are many people blinded from the truth. Please pray for this country that God will uh, open the way to reach out to the hundreds people. I praise God for the freedom of sharing the gospel in this country. And if you feel that God is calling you to this country, please uh, step out the faith, just what I had, um, obeying His call. God is faithful in persevering and in uh, providing all your needs. You just need to obey His calling. The Filipino people are fast language learners. They're hard workers. They're adaptable. They make great missionaries. And uh, I couldn't be more excited to see how the Lord has been using Nelly to do a huge work. Uh, world changing, uh, changing a nation there in Cambodia, discipling teenagers, training students to be full-time ministers. I really like to work with her because of her dedication and we have one mind to share the gospel, one passion and she's very prayerful. Everything that we do, we started it, we finish it, we accomplish it through prayer. So as we work together, I experienced how uh, she cared uh, people, she cared Cambodians, she cared uh, workers, and also she cared as a friend. I really uh, thank God for raising up supporters for this ministry from around the world. Uh, because of that, we are able to uh, minister the people in the village, uh, teaching the kids at the Sunday school, and sharing to them the good news. God is faithful to His promises that He will never leave me nor forsake me, that He will be with me until the end of time. Yeah, He is um, faithful in giving me strength, good health, this country, the people, they are so kind and friendly, and I got many friends from this country, from believers and non-believers, and God bless me with many supporters nowadays, and with the gift of learning their language and learning how to do um, many things that in my country I never tried to do, like driving the motorbike or driving the truck tuk-tuk or tractor so I learned many things from here so I never regret that I came here